Welcome to the fifth day of Christmas. Let's dive in. Hey, we're Drew and Kato with Catholic Link, bringing you daily reflections on the 12 days of Christmas. If you're new here, please hit subscribe. We are close to getting a thousand subscribers, which would be a great goal for the 12th day. And on the fifth day of Christmas, our true love gives to us five golden rings. Five golden rings. Which stand for? Well, there is the five books of the Pentateuch, the Old Testament. And then the five wounds of Christ mm -hmm. and uh, the circle. So the gold ring stands for God's nature. So God is infinite. Mm -hmm. He has no beginning and end. He's the alpha, the omega. He is the first mover. He is the first cause that our intellect seeks for. The idea that his uh, love is like the gold, which the gold is a true and What's the word I'm looking for? Pure, pure. element. Thank you. Uh, that his love is true and pure. That it wants to encircle us. It wants to wrap us in that, in that mercy, in that grace. That his love is not something that we earn. It is freely given and always there for us. So uh, for the next one, the five books of the Pentateuch or the Torah, uh, are the first five books of our Old Testament. So that would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And typically uh, in the ancient Hebrew tradition, the uh, they would study and memorize all of those books. And some people, some uh, Jews still do that today, which is really cool. To know that scripture, to yeah. know that law, because the first five books are really God establishing his family and teaching them how to live within the covenant, which we talked about on day two, that God makes covenants with his people. And especially as we see them move out of Egypt in slavery, we see God trying to give them laws mm -hmm. to really help them learn how to be children of God. Yeah. And, and we think of laws as, as repress, repressive, uh, but really in the Old Testament, God was giving the Israelites laws in order to teach them how to love. I think an example of this, so just concrete, is the Sabbath. God wanted to tell them, you are no longer slaves. You are mm. now children. You now have a day of rest and you must take that. And that reality that that law <laughs> is because he loves us. And we don't know how to be children. We know how to be slaves. And we need to learn how to accept love. And a love that's different than maybe what TV or like general media portrays it to be. A love that looks like the five wounds of Christ. I know. Tied in there. So, uh, so the five wounds of Christ are in both of the hands, both the feet, and then the side um, where the spear pierced his heart. And yeah, when, when I look at that, you look at the sacrificial love. So agape love in the Greek is is to will the good of the others, to sacrifice for them. And that's what true love does. That's what Christ did on the cross for us. It's really to call them to be the best version of themselves, which is what the law is trying to do. That's what God is trying to teach us through these, these laws, these commandments, this way of life to really bring about our highest potential. Yeah. Uh, so for the feast today, we have St. Thomas Beckett, uh, which I initially mixed up with St. Thomas More, although the stories are very similar. So St. Thomas Beckett, uh, in 1162 was made the Bishop of Canterbury, um, was originally friends with Henry II, the King. Um, once he became Bishop, he realized that he reformed a lot of his ways and eventually Henry II had him killed, uh, which is funny because Thomas More was also killed by a King Henry. So I've decided that if your name is Thomas and you live in England and you have a King that's name is Henry, you're in trouble. Yeah. That's you should at least be ready to stand up for the faith. because And stand up for truth. But I think what we really learn from today's Saint of St. Thomas Beckett is this idea of reform, mm -hmm. this idea that no matter what our life was like, no matter who our friends were, that we have the opportunity to make something new. Yeah. And in that, to accept the mercy that God wants to pour for, forth for us, this idea that his wounds gush forth grace, they gush forth love. And so God is perfect truth and perfect love. Mm 
And that can be really hard in humanity. It's probably one of the most difficult concepts is how do we give truth and give love? Because the reality is, so I like the metaphor of a flower and the idea that God's God's love is like the sun. It is so bright. There's no darkness in it. The darkness does not overcome it. It is so pure that it shines forth and a flower under that ray would totally be scorched and burned. But it's through the water that the flower is given grace, is given love, and is able to withstand that sun. The sun didn't change. Its rays are the same. What changed is the flower. It accepted that grace. It accepted that mercy. And it was able to really thrive and to grow. And so for us, no matter what we have done, where we have been, that God calls us to come home to the sacrament of confession, to come home to his grace, to his mercy, to his love that is never ending, to just embrace us and to give us that gift. And so if you didn't have the opportunity to prepare for Christmas by going to confession, realizing that it's not too late, that it's the perfect gift to give yourself this Christmas season is forgiveness. All right. So for our traditions for the five days of Christmas, the first one is going to be treat yourself to eating five gigantic donuts. (laughs) That's a lot. (laughs) We will be making some homemade protein donuts because I'm a little all out on the sugar, to be honest. We have sugar overdose. (laughs) Overdose. Um, And then the uh, five. Also with those donuts, if you do work, it's a great thing to bring them into work and wish everyone a Merry Christmas. It's a simple way to just evangelize and you gave them free donuts. So they're already happy. Everyone likes donuts. Everybody likes donuts. So a great, easy way to share kind of what you're doing to celebrate the 12 days. Mm -hmm. The next tradition uh, is wearing gold. So Mm -hmm. adorning yourself uh, in your gold earrings or a gold bracelet, uh, a chain. We can talk a little bit about in the comments, the symbolism of just wrapping yourself um, in the chain of God, of allowing yourself to be his, his beloved, but his servant and his, um, his. Yeah. And then also kind of going along the lines of the mercy. So when I think of the five wounds of Christ, I can't help but think of St. Faustina and the idea of praying the divine mercy chaplet. So for me, I attended World Youth Day in 2016 at seven months pregnant in Poland. And I had no idea what World Youth Day was at all. I thought it was a conference retreat kind of thing. It's definitely a pilgrimage. I looked around the first day and I was like, there's no pregnant people here, kids. We're Catholic. Like there's always pregnant people and babies. After 17 miles of walking on day one, I realized why I had- There's a reason. Yeah, I was a weird (laughs) anomaly at this event. But while I was there, Drew was deployed and- in the Middle East. And every day they had a reflection of somebody talking about the martyrs in the Middle East that were occurring and that are occurring right Mm -hmm. now. And so that hit very close to home and gave more purpose to Drew's mission while he and I were apart. Uh, But the, there was one refugee who stood up and talked about how she prayed a divine mercy chaplet. And so the divine mercy chaplet goes, I, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And instead of the word us, she said ISIS. So for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on ISIS and on the whole world. And this idea of intentionally praying it. And so I really like to put in that word us, a person, uh, somebody who has hurt me, and I can offer them an entire decade of the Divine Mercy Chaplet or somebody that I just want to pray for. And I can go each individual bead as a different person, um, but I really just to be able to internalize giving that mercy specifically to someone else. So maybe an idea for today. So thank you guys so much for listening. Again, if you could hit subscribe, that would really help us out. We're praying for you all during this Christmas season. Merry Christmas and God bless.